There is a lot made of footballers and their wages, far more, it would seem, than any other sport or branch of the entertainment industry. I've previously made a video explaining why footballers aren't necessarily overpaid in general terms, but today, we are dealing in specifics, and specifically, footballers who are overpaid. Even in a world of £1 million a week plus contracts and £200 million transfers, it is still just about possible to distinguish a good deal from a bad one. Lionel Messi, for example, is perfectly good value even as the best paid footballer on earth, given his ability and importance to Barcelona. Not everyone justifies their pay packets though, so here are my 7 most overpaid players in world football. P.S. I haven't included any Chinese Super League players, otherwise it'd just be Chinese Super League players, and I figured that would be a bit tedious. Luke Shaw, £150,000 a week. Almost everything that could have gone wrong with Luke Shaw and Manchester United has done, at least from the club's perspective. Although the £30 million fee that the Red Devils paid for Shaw in 2014 briefly made him the world's most expensive teenager, it didn't seem like a terrible deal. In some ways, it was a little bit reminiscent of the Aaron Wan-Bissaka deal in as much as Shaw had proved himself over more than 18 months in the Premier League, even as a youngster, although the fee was high, they ought to get more than 10 years of service out of the England international. Shaw suffered a hamstring injury ruling out at the start of the season, but he grew into his debut campaign as the season went on. He made a really bright start to the 2015-16 season, but that would shortly be brought to an end following a wretched double leg fracture sustained from a tackle by Hex Moreno in a game against PSV. Shaw was sidelined for seven months and he returned to action with a new manager who he would endure a frosty relationship with. Mourinho publicly criticised and humiliated Shaw and it looked as though his Manchester United future was in tatters. As such, the club took no action to extend his contract. However, at the start of the 2018-19 season, Shaw re-established himself as a regular fixture at Old Trafford, and whilst the team floundered, Shaw was one of their star men, with talk of him being handed the captaincy. Now alarmed by his dwindling years left on his contract, United's ever well-considered hierarchy offered him a new five-year deal worth a reported £150,000 a week, so almost £40 million across those five years in total. Shaw has failed to justify those wage demands in the 14 months since, and now faces a strong challenge from Brandon Williams for the left-back spot in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side. Lucas Vazquez £148,000 a week For a fan base that's so good at hounding world-class players out of their club, Real Madrid fans have really dropped the ball with Lucas Vazquez. Vazquez is almost like a Spanish Jesse Lingard, who could also have made this seven, in as much as he is a product of Real's academy, he's sometimes talked about as though he's still only 20, and he has stuck around for far longer than you might have expected him to have done. Unlike Manchester United though, Real Madrid is still a top team with legitimate hopes of winning domestic and continental titles in the immediate future, making Vazquez's perennial presence all the more surprising. Despite the idea that Vazquez is still some kind of prospect, he's actually 28 years old. Capped nine times by Spain, Vazquez was a regular fixture in Zinedine Zidane's first spell in charge of the club, and he may have found himself out of the door in the summer, just gone, had Zizou not returned last season. Zidane seems to adore Vazquez, who is capable of playing on either the left or right flank, and always plays with plenty of energy and enthusiasm. The fact remains that he's not a world-class footballer, and never will be, and I think a reported salary of close to £150,000 a week is pretty extraordinary for a player of his calibre. No doubt Zizou disagrees, and in his defence, Vazquez did score against Osasuna at the weekend as he rapidly closes in on 200 appearances at the Bernabeu. Jesse Rodriguez, £100,000 a week. Few players have been as rubbish for as long as Hesse, whilst reportedly picking up a whopping £100,000 a week. The Spaniard showed promise as a youngster at Real Madrid, particularly during the 2013-14 season, and he played 38 games in his final season at the Bernabeu. In 2016, Hesse joined PSG for 25 million euros, agreeing upon a lucrative £100,000 a week five-year deal, which included a so-called anti-Barcelona clause. Real inserted the clause to prevent Hesse from ever playing for their El Clasico rivals, however, they'd probably given arm and a leg to have the 26-year-old, plaguing the Barca first team with his presence now. Hesse is now in the penultimate year of his five-year stay at PSG, where he has made just 16 appearances in all competitions. He's made low moves to Las Palmas, Stoke City, and Real Betis, which have ranged from bad to terrible, and is currently on loan as Sporting Club de Portugal. 
Clearly, Hesse has some talent. This is a player who was welcoming comparisons with Cristiano Ronaldo when he first broke through at Real Madrid, but his attitude has been severely called into question, and he has done absolutely nothing of note for the last four years, so he has to make this seven. Man Biramjuf, £65,000 a week. From a former Stoke City player in fifth to a current one in fourth, Man Biramjuf doesn't inspire the same level of vitriol among Stoke City fans as Hesse Rodriguez. That's for the simple fact that he rarely seemed to down tools, with Stoke fans' grievances with Juve lying primarily with his inability to put the ball in the back of the net. The former Manchester United man actually has many strings to his bow. He's strong, he has a good engine, he's incredibly versatile, and he has excellent striking instincts in terms of his movement in forward areas. Sadly, however, Juve also has some pretty considerable flaws. He isn't the quickest off the mark, his technique is far from perfect, but most notably, his finishing is absolutely dreadful. In his first season in the Potteries, Juve bagged 12 goals in 38 games. In the four and a half seasons since, he has scored 13 goals in 117 games. In his defence, Juve has spent some of that time playing a right back, but likewise, you have to ask yourself why a centre forward found himself a right back in the first place. New Stoke boss Michael O'Neill has commended Juve's attitude as he has played a handful of games for the club's under-23 side but £65,000 a week is an outrageous amount of money for a championship club to reportedly be paying a player in their under-23 squad. Juve has played just 56 minutes of championship football this season, despite being one of the highest earners in the division, so I can't overlook him in fourth place. Christian Benteke £120,000 a week Following 34 Premier League games without a goal, Christian Benteke has Jordan Pickford to thank for his first league goal in almost 10 months. For the last two and a half seasons, Benteke has had a goal-scoring record most goalkeepers would be ashamed of, bagging just five goals in 68 games. What's more, three of those goals came during the 2017-18 season, meaning prior to his strike against Everton, Benteke had scored just one goal in 36 games over a period of a season and a half. There aren't many jobs where you can consistently fail to deliver for that long and still pick up a reported £120,000 a week, which equates to more than £6 million a year. To many people's dismay, Benteke signed a new deal at Palace in October, one which will keep him at the club until the summer of 2021. Whilst his earnings are quite clearly absurd based on his extended form over the last couple of seasons, Palace obviously don't want to lose their record signing for nothing. Benteke has proved during his three seasons with Aston Villa and in his first season at Selhurst Park that he can be prolific at this level, but it's not 2016 anymore, so the 29-year-old has to make this seven. Alexis Sanchez 400,000 pounds a week. Alexis Sanchez is hands down the most talented player in this seven, but he is also by far the most handsomely paid. For six or seven years, Sanchez was among the most dangerous and effective wide players in the game. In the 2016-17 season, his last full campaign at Arsenal, he scored 30 goals in 51 games and was arguably the best player in the Premier League. As he entered the final year of his Arsenal contract though, showing little interest in remaining at the club, the Gunners had to cash in on their star man. Manchester United saw off the competition of near neighbours Manchester City, but doing so wouldn't come cheap. Sanchez signed a three and a half year deal worth a reported £400,000 a week, making him the best paid player in the Premier League. For someone typically so explosive and inventive, Sanchez was remarkably sluggish in a Manchester United shirt. In 18 months at Old Trafford, he scored just 5 goals in 45 games, making him arguably the most overpaid footballer on earth. Sanchez is now on loan with Inter Milan, who are believed to be paying just over half of his enormous salary for the duration of the loan deal. He has been sent off as many times as he has scored at the San Siro, although he's yet to get meaningful game time, and it would be madness not to put him in the top 3 of this seven. Morgan Schneiderlin £120,000 a week I seem to remember doing a video on the seven worst footballers earning more than £100,000 a week around about a year ago, and I'm pretty sure Morgan Schneiderlin made that seven. My apologies go to the Frenchman, but he makes another undesirable seven here today. Schneiderlin was a magnificent servant to Southampton, and having dropped down into League One in his first season at St Mary's, he stuck with the club as they climbed from the third tier of English football to the lofty heights of a seventh place finish in the Premier League. Immediately following that 7th place finish, Schneiderlin joined Manchester United for £25 million. He spent a decent, if unspectacular, season and a half at Old Trafford before being reunited with Ronald Koeman at Everton in January 2017. 
The Toffees paid an initial £20 million, potentially rising to £24 million for the holding midfielder, and he looked like a really shrewd addition in his first half season. Just as he had at Southampton, Schneidlin brought solidity to the Everton side, giving the rest of Ronald Koeman's midfield the license to push on. The following season, Koeman was sacked by October, Schneidlin's form was all over the place, and he looked like a very expensive waste of money. Football's a game which can change quickly like that. Schneidlin was sent off in Everton's first game of this season, although he's still racked up 17 appearances. He looks a little laboured and lethargic for a team with Everton's aspirations though, and with a reported salary of £120,000 a week, it's little wonder he's yet to be offloaded. That's it for today's 7. Thanks for watching, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and obviously make sure you're subscribed to HITC 7s. Also, if you're watching on mobile, just try tapping your screen now. Apparently that is sometimes required to bring up our little subscribe button and a couple of other videos that YouTube thinks you might enjoy.